Hey folks, how you doing? It's Deepak Shukla here from Life, Love and Entrepreneurship and today I had the chance to catch up with Matthew Bernstein of Skill Hearts as well as a top instructor on Udemy with over 50,000 students. We had a blast talking to each other. Enjoy! Hey. Matt, hello. How you doing, dude? Good, how are you? <laughs> yeah, good, good. Um, so, hey everybody, I've got Matthew Bernstein with me of um, Skill Hearts, Udemy of Chicago, no, fuck, I've already got it wrong, Boston, Massachusetts, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to keep that in, fuck it, um, so dude, uh, I know it's, uh, what time is it now, is it like 8.20? 8.22, okay. 8.22, wicked, awesome, awesome time to be alive and to be well, I, uh, I, I, I forced Matt to get out of bed, I say I forced him, he, he got out of bed all himself, uh, to come and, and, and join me for this uh, wonderful podcast. Uh, my audience are clearly bored already. Um, so dude, um, I wanted to, um, obviously I've mentioned a few things there, uh, but I want to begin by asking you about bowling, because uh, it's like the number one thing that's listed on your dun dun dun, your uh, Udemy things I like section Bowling becomes comes before beer. It comes before your girlfriend. It comes <laughs> before your family. I'm like, fuck me. My man likes bowling. Dude, talk to me about bowling. Go. <laughs> Every Sunday, social bowling. Grab a Guinness. So it's it is above beer. Probably shouldn't be above my girlfriend, but we'll <laughs> maybe maybe we'll change that. And um, every Sunday, go to a bowling alley near Fenway Park, best ballpark in the world and just bowl my heart out and just meet new people and hang out. Wow. Dude, that, that, that's what I, I love the way that you put that. Um, Sundays hanging out the beer, dude, there is a career if you ever want it in infomercials waiting for you. I, uh, I know it. I think you'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> um, hell yeah. So, um, okay, cool, dude. So, um, I, um, so uh, I, I met Matt kind of through, through through Udemy, I guess, in a sense. We're both instructors. I have nowhere near the kind of epic scale of success that he's having. I mean, your headline reads instructor of 40,000 plus. It's, it's, is it, is it, what, what, is the, what is the number now, actually? Uh, it's 46,192 on Udemy officially. Um, and I know that you've um, obviously launched Skill Hearts, which um, we've been discussing, which, is, which, is, which, which seems like amazing. Um, and I guess what I wanted to first ask is, um, dude, how, how do you manage creating all of these courses and then kind of you've got your own startup with Skill Hearts. Then you've got bowling, obviously. I mean, your girlfriend's not so important because she's quite far, far down on that list. So um, how do you manage it all, dude? I think I think I take a, a lesson out of your book. I go hard on life, right? Because constantly I'm just learning. So ever since about 10 years ago, I basically thought that my purpose in life was to constantly learn and experience new things. So for the past 10 years, I've been learning skills that they wouldn't necessarily teach me in school, how to make money online, how to do personal finance. Over the past 10 years and for the rest of my life, I'm going to be learning these skills and skills that are necessary that I think people need to learn and have a lack of learning. So that's basically how I learn the skills and then I can just easily create a course surrounding those skills. Okay, so the second question that I've got, and dude, you really do go 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 hard. I mean, I was just actually um, looking, um, I, I scrolled down because of course I, I was most fascinated by the things I like section. It's kind of what stuck with me. But then I looked down for the courses taught by Matt Bernstein and dude, like there's there's three pages of the stuff and we've got what four eight twelve twelve times I don't even know if it finishes at three how many course how twenty five courses I'm such an idiot it's it's right at the top <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm trying to be like all clever and you're like dude you mentioned how many students I have look right it's right there um twenty five courses um so what I want to ask actually rather is what is your advice to people that you know, there's that gap between kind of like thinking and doing and you get people that have great thoughts, but very little execution. Do you feel that you've always been a kind of a, a doer rather than a talker? And how do you advise then talkers? That's my question. <laughs> I'm definitely a little bit of both, but for um, doing, I spend around 
30 minutes before bed or 30 minutes in the morning thinking about what I'm going to do for the day. And then the rest of the day, I just do that. So that's why when you were asking me if I could do this interview yesterday, I already had a set schedule of what I wanted to do, but then I can just sneak you in the next day. So I think definitely it's called, Tim Ferriss calls it efficacy, and it's basically doing the one most important thing per day and making that day worthwhile. So if you were to list a couple things that you do today, would those satisfy you for that day? And then you'd just be an idiot not to do it. Oh, amazing, dude. I, 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 love, oh, I love how it's so simply put. Efficacy and the one most important thing of the day. And I love that you let me slip in through your back door. I just thought I'd put that sexual innuendo in there. It'd be <laughs> highly unnecessary, but it makes me laugh. Um, and then what is your advice then to, because you must get it all the time, you know, some, some, some variation of, dude, how can I be as productive as you? Oof. See, that's tough. Actually, nobody's ever asked me that question. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think, I, I think it just comes down to tapping in and being self-aware, like Gary Vaynerchuk would say. You got to be self-aware of yourself. You know what you need to do inside. It's just, you know, people want to avoid that, and that's why they watch TV. They play video games. They just want to avoid what they, ha- what they know they should do because what they know they should do is pretty fucking hard. So do that. Do what is hard in your life. I think that you've just hit upon something that uh, I thought the answer was amazing, by the way. Totally, you should start writing on Quora. Oh, I'm bad there, but never mind. What the hell? Um, uh, you um, hit on something that I think is not spoken about um, enough. That The doing, actually, it's pretty fucking hard, right? And that's invariably why a lot of people kind of don't do. Because I presume that there's, I mean, how do you cope with the, because when you're learning and then you try and execute, there's always, there's always a new challenge in front of you, isn't there? I don't know whether it might be a piece of HTML that you don't know, or there's a lighting issue with a video, or you're trying to get a partnership and, you know, your emails are falling on deaf ears. How do you um, kind of keep motivated in those moments where everything's gone tits up or you're in shit's creek or you just feel like, I can't be bothered, this is shit? Well, I guess it's about being proactive. Like people before us, like Thomas Edison, tried thousands of times before he was successful creating a light bulb. Like if that man could do it, if Elon Musk can run two or arguably three companies, then I could power through whatever the shit that I'm trying to do. <laughs> uh, I, I, I love your succinctness because it's, it's quite, I mean, you're quite right. And it's, it's really a case of looking at the reference points that, You've mentioned with you know the, the the traditional Edison and the contemporary Musk in terms of how they approach life and what they've achieved respectively, and it's like, well, fuck, I can I can always do more, and um, it's a good way to to keep you motivated. So, dude, I now want to you to to tell me a little bit about kind of skill hearts, kind of formally, because the audience will presumably be presumably be them. Fairly familiar with Udemy, but what in a nutshell is Skillhance? Skillhance is basically the Udemy, but just for make money online courses. So that's the niche is make money online and kind of like passive income or personal finance. Basically anything that a business owner like myself would need. I teach for people basically who are like me, just a business owner, has a home office and learning all the skills that they would need to make money online. And sorry, yeah. keep going. No, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, and, and basically, the plan would be to offer course bundles. So you to me offers just individual courses. Mine would be like if I have five courses about how to make money online, I would have that all in a course bundle, offering like twenty five hours worth of content for like fifteen bucks. So I want to add even more value than what you to me is offering. And how have you not got banned or slapped on the wrist by Udemy because you're a top instructor? And they might think that, hang on, he's launching a competitor company, so let's just block him on our site. Or has that has there been some partnership struck? Or because I, I wondered that actually before. Udemy, Udemy actually allows you to do whatever you want because if you if you make the content, it's your content. So you're just using Udemy as a sales channel, and you're allowed to go out and use other companies as a sales channel create your own website one of their or their top earner rob percival he's actually on a plethora of other websites and udemy doesn't seem to care he makes three million dollars last year on udemy and he's making probably a boatload of money on other websites too 
$3 million a year on Udemy. That's, <laughs> that's incredible because you know that well, that's one of the other things I kind of wanted to get your take on. You know, there's this whole chorus of people that say, Udemy sucks because they take so much commission. And then when you put that number like $3 million a year, uh, how many, I mean, one, actually, just, do you want to just talk about that in general? Because I'm about to ask six questions and you'll forget them, obviously, <laughs> because it's six fucking questions and who remembers that? Do you just want to talk about that in general, dude? Yeah. So, well, Udemy is 10 million students. And if they're selling your course for a minimum of $10, I would get 50% of that, $5. And it just like adds up when you get thousands and thousands of sales. And like, yeah, I don't make 3 million, but I make a livable income and I'm very, very happy to do it. So just like the sales add up, like you spend what, like a month max creating your video course. It doesn't cost you anything to host it and it doesn't matter. Your expenses are the same whether you sell it for $1 or $100. So like why do you care if you can sell your course for like 10 bucks? Udemy takes 50% of it. Like you're helping somebody for only $10. It's a win-win for everybody. And then the next question is um, and I, sorry listeners, I'm clearly making this about myself because I'm curious now, um, which is clearly where you're going to switch off, but it's fine. Um, so you, um, or rather, what is your advice, for example, for the many instructors in general who are starting to produce a video course or two video courses, let's say, they've seen maybe four sales over the course of a month and a half and they're thinking, what a load of shit or is the platform of itself, whether it's Skill Hearts for money making or Udemy of itself, are they enough to kind of bring in kind of, you know, four, dollar, four, four digit figures or do you need to heavily market kind of off those sites as well? Well, I think depending on what your goals are, I think Udemy would be enough to make four figures just for you. I think it depends on if your course is uh, relevant on the Udemy platform, if people are actually interested in buying your course. So doing research on your course subject would be a factor. Udemy, if you want to succeed on Udemy, you want to do comprehensive courses. So over 10 hour courses, those are the ones that are going to be succeeding because what are the, what are the biggest um, sales points that you're going to make. So if you're selling a course for $20 and Udemy um, discounts it for $50, one of the biggest uh, advantages to you is if you had 10 hours or 20 hours of worth of content. It doesn't matter if your student's actually going to view it or not, but your student wants to feel like they're getting the most value in exchange for their money. I just have skill hands and everything else because I want to make this into a $50 million business one day whether it be 35 years in the future. And I think uh, it's very, very smart for one person, including myself, to uh, rely on direct communication with their students. So, for example, I don't want to rely on the Udemy platform. Udemy can take away my two promotional announcements per month. I want to control the direct communication with my students for the future. And that's uh, an incredibly important point, I think, uh audience uh because i was recently banned on quora <laughs> uh and, and that's why i don't want to join because why the hell were you banned from Quora? i don't want to get banned <laughs> it, it, exactly and uh I, I i i'm sure there'll be an echo of people saying well deepak at the bottom of your messages you were leaving a marketing sales message uh, which i indeed was um and the you know that aside um it is the case that that was uh, a huge source of lead generation that was then cut off overnight and it underlines the fact that what I think is brilliant about skill hearts and it's, it's, it's a wider lesson for anybody I think on on any form of kind of let's say online media that you're ultimately still a tenant in somebody else's house and it's really important that you create your own online bricks and mortar building which is what Matt has done with skill hearts so the I, I love that you could obviously disappear quote unquote off Udemy overnight which would never happen but if indeed it did, you've still got this. And I think that that's um, a really important thing that, you know, certainly I didn't appreciate enough until two days ago when I got banned. But anyway. <laughs> um, hey, hey, it's a, it's a lesson exactly. that, you, that you learn, you know, at a young age. So Yeah, no, agreed, agreed. So, dude, I'm going to go through some spitfire questions with you um, to just, just because I feel like it. So 
the worst kind of questions, hey. but love it. Hey, this is probably my favorite interview of all time. So keep, <laughs> keep doing it. <laughs> all right. So dude, which was your favorite course to make that you've ever made? And okay. I'll ask the next question after go favorite course, not the course that makes most money, your favorite course that you've made. I think the course that teaches about Udemy because that's currently what I'm doing most at and I do want people to learn the skills that I've learned about how they can emulate the same successes that I've had. Okay, perfect. What's the course that makes you the most money? The selling on eBay courses. I have two of them and both of them by far make me the most money. Okay, perfect. Amazing. When you um, are in the bathroom and you need to do a number one or number two, is the door open or door closed when your girlfriend is in the house? Doors open when I take a piss. Doors closed when I take a shit. Lesson, audience, these are some important life skills. Fuck the course. But she wouldn't care. She wouldn't care if I was going number two and the door was open. Okay, it's, it's more me because I'm not. I'm not very comfortable with it. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, how would she feel knowing that bowling, beer, deli meat, and hiking come above her? in your list of Udemy bio, bio importances. <laughs> so at least clarification, she doesn't actually come below any of that. She's, <laughs> you know, she is most important. Just for business reasons, I, I list the things that are more that are more in tune with my personality because I am a separate person from her. So okay. these, the, you know, bowling is... I guess more of an interest or hobby and and I I mean she probably already knows that that I, those things are listed above her. <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing answer. What is the weirdest fanboy fangirl email or communication that you've ever received? Ooh. I don't, I wouldn't say I think I think what the one that stuck out to me most was Somebody wanted me to help them make like seventy thousand dollars in their first year. Okay. I'm like, well, that that depends on like things that are way outside of my control. Like whoever guarantees you that is like lying to you. <laughs> and she starts like yelling at me, like saying I'm unprofessional and um, like I can't. You know, it's just like that's the only thing that stuck out. She was like legitimately yelling at me. So I don't know. This 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 feeds into the next question. I I do like that. She's like. How? What do you mean? I can't make seventy thousand dollars a year. You're clearly a snake oil salesman. Which is my next question. What is you, in your opinion, the biggest example of snake oil selling in the kind of internet marketing world? Oh my God! So at least with uh, Udemy, what's taking a lot of heat right now is uh, Alan Hill, one of their biggest earners on Udemy, uh, left or got banned or whatever, and he had uh, his course called "How I Make Thirty Thousand Dollars a Month on Udemy with No Marketing." And I just think that's ridiculous because even your copywriting is a form of marketing, and him commenting on Facebook is a form of influencer marketing. So I, I and obviously thirty thousand dollars a month for the average Udemy instructor, not a lot of people can accomplish that. So I, I thought that that was just um, scammy and snake oily and everything else. Oh dude, I'm so happy that you gave an actual specific example, which is brilliant. Um, Matt Hey man, real talk. <laughs> real talk it's coming straight out of Boston, not Chicago like I fucked up earlier, shows what I know about <laughs> fucking the States, ironically, Massachusetts. Um, I um, loved having you on um, and I just want you in, I should have done this at the beginning but I didn't, you have 30 seconds starting from when I say now, the second time, to explain, and 30 seconds, what it is the fuck that you actually do now. I make video courses, teach people how to make money online, including selling on eBay and teaching on Udemy or teaching online. And I think it's the skills that they wouldn't teach you in school. It's the skills that uh, personal finance, at least in the States, I don't know what the fuck they teach anywhere else. <laughs> but, <laughs> And I think those are very important skills because in college I learned about this huge income inequality in the U.S., in India. And I think making money online is the key to getting a lot of people out of that income inequality. Matt, that was amazing. Everybody, I hope that you enjoyed the show. I was with Matthew Bernstein, loves bowling, loves his girlfriend, and also makes the odd course from time to time. So, woohoo! We're done, folks. Thanks, Deepak. 